Right, welcome back. Parasitic gastroenteritis, the technical term for gut worms, remains probably the most important disease of livestock, especially small ruminants in the UK and beyond. Now for gut worms, we mostly lump different species together for ease because there are a lot of common features. But in reality, they're a group of closely related species each with subtly different life cycles, which then feed into subtly different means of control. So for example, we have talked about Nematodirus before and how that has its own quirks. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about Homonchus. Homonchus contortus, to give it its full name, also known charmingly as the barber's pole worm because of that red and white pattern. The red is the intestinal tract filled with blood wrapped around the much paler reproductive tract. How cute. It has been described as the nematode nemesis of the small ruminant production system. Why the reputation? Unlike other gut worms, Himonchus is a blood sucker. Adults remove about 0.05 mils of blood a day. Now in isolation, that's not very much, but when burdens get very high, say 5,000 worms in an animal, that translates to 250 mils or getting on for half a pint of blood per day. This can quite quickly lead to a very profound anemia. They are also remarkably prolific worms. The females can produce vast numbers of eggs. The life cycle is very short, meaning pasture contamination can very quickly explode under the right environmental conditions. Again, unlike other gut worms, adult sheep don't seem to develop as strong a resistance to homonchus as they would after exposure. Now this might be because they don't get exposed as often to homonchus as to other worms. It might be because challenges are often very sudden and so any immune response comes too late. Homonchus contortus is traditionally associated with the summer months in hot, humid climates. And so historically, we've thought of it as a disease of Southern England at most. Unfortunately, and this is the theme for many other infectious diseases of livestock, it's pretty much found around the UK. There is evidence that Homonchus is adapting to the climate and to management measures by altering its egg size and temperature viability. The official term for the disease caused by Homonchus is called homonchosis. And what that actually looks like in practice depends on the severity of exposure. If sheep or goats are exposed to a high number of infectious larvae in a very short space of time, we tend to see acute homonchosis. Animals dropping dead, especially when driven, accompanied by a very significant anemia. This will manifest itself as very pale mucous membranes. We often look at the gums or the conjunctiva, that's the membrane around the eye. Likewise, it's common to see an elevated heart rate and an elevated breathing rate. That's because the cardiovascular system is trying to compensate for the anemia, the blood can carry less oxygen, and so it's trying to pump it round faster. Interestingly, diarrhea isn't typically a sign of homonchosis in these acute cases. If exposure is more gradual, then we see what we call subacute or chronic homonchosis, which looks remarkably similar to chronic liver fluke. These will present as an ill thrift, poor lactation in ewes or nannies, poor growth in lambs, a less severe weakness, anemia again, poor body condition, and what we call a submandibular edema. Edema being a swelling and the mandible being this jawbone here. So submandibular, under the jawbone, swelling, edema. That is a symptom of any disease which causes low protein levels in the blood, and it is commonly known as bottle jaw. Getting on to diagnosis, in countries where homonchus is more common, they use a scale called the Fermacher scale. This scores the relative pallor of those mucous membranes and is used as a proxy to determine homonchus burdens. Otherwise, diagnosis of homonchus is usually down to a combination of suspicious clinical signs alongside very high worm egg counts. Remember, those homonchus females are exceptionally prolific. To get a proper confirmation, dung samples are sent away to a lab for what's called a peanut agglutinin test. Peanut agglutinin binds only to homonchus contortus eggs rather than to other species, and so this can be used to differentiate them. And unlike other species, you can see homonchus adults in the abomasum, that's one of the stomach compartments, 
on post-mortem examination. So far, this video probably doesn't give us a lot of hope, but there is some. For those farms which don't yet have homunculus on them, the best strategy is going to be to keep it off. And this is going to be down to your quarantine treatments. We've talked about those for sheep in a previous technical. Go and talk to your vet about the specifics, but it's likely to involve a group four or five wormer, plus or minus some sort of clazantel based trench, plus yarding them for a day or two to avoid any homonchus eggs being shed on pasture. If you find yourself in the midst of an outbreak, obviously the person to go to for treatment is going to be your vet. Homonchus is susceptible to broad spectrum wormers. That is your group one, twos and threes, assuming there is no resistance and that is a big assumption. Homonchus seems particularly prone to developing resistance to wormer groups probably something to do with its fast reproductive rate. One upside, unlike other gutworm species, it is susceptible to a couple of narrow spectrum flucicides, clozantel and nitroxenil. The usual rules for wormer use, the Scots principles, including weighing animals so you know you're dosing them correctly, calibrating your guns, leaving mildly or unaffected animals untreated to maintain in refugia populations and so on. Prevention is similar to other gutworm species, managing grazing to try and avoid exposure of very susceptible stock to high burdens. Rotating grazing small ruminants with cattle or with arable crops will increase the area of clean grazing available, but clearly this takes a lot of planning. It's not a short-term solution and some farms which are sheep or goat heavy are going to struggle with this unless they make some big management changes. Where homonchus is an issue, routine monitoring of lambs and ewes with a formatcher score may be a sensible option. One other piece of good news, unusually for a parasite, there is a vaccine available for homonchus. This was developed by Morden, our friends up in Edinburgh. It's called Barbavax. It isn't commercially available in the UK, although you can get it through a special import. It is commercially available in South Africa and Australia. Now, it isn't the most straightforward vaccine to use. It does require three initial doses, plus quite frequent boosters, but it does at least offer a less reactive way to controlling homonchosis. So that's homonchus contortus, the barber's pole worm. If you've had issues with it before, leave me a comment. It would be really interesting to know. I suspect in the UK, it's gonna be something we see more and more of. As usual, I've attached some links in the video description for more information. And as ever, your vet will be a great source of information because they'll know your flock and your situation. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this one. Go ahead, click subscribe, ring the little bell, leave me a comment and give the video a thumbs up if you dare. I will see you for the next one.